Hello and welcome guys to the second episode of Techpreneur Shop. Today the geek of the day is uh, Ms. Ankita Gaba and she is co-founder of Social Samosa. Before that she founded Super Chuha which was a social media uh, consulting agency and uh, post that she, she has been you know uh, associated with a lot of consultancy and considered one of the top notch uh, uh, women in the social media world in, especially in India. So guys uh, let's start and let's begin the journey and let's try to hear it from Ankita's, Ankita's mouth itself. So Ankita my first question to you would be if you have to describe your entire journey entire journey in a brief of two to three minutes so how would you do that? So basically I started off with uh, the entertainment industry. I was a public relations officer with a renowned music label and uh, that's where I got a lot of exposure to um, PR, marketing, copcom. Uh, essentially I uh, then uh, since I was in the entertainment industry I got exposure to the uh, television stars and that's when we started off um, with uh, online presence for uh, entertainment uh, artists and that's how Super Chua started off. Uh, eventually we also ha started handling a lot of corporate clients um, and then um, decided to not be in an agency model and wrapped it up. Um, like you said consulted uh, a bunch of brands uh, for a really long time and then started off uh, Social Samosa with the objective that uh, when I was running an agency, me and my entire team we used to struggle to research online and find any material online which is uh, India specific. We used to find a lot of case studies, a lot of material, reading material which is very um, apt for the international markets but not for the Indian markets. So the idea was to create something that caters to the Indian social media industry that becomes an aggregator that brings together everything that is happening in the Indian social media industry under one roof. That's the objective that I started Social Samosa with and uh, so far we've um, managed to do that um, successfully I think uh, or I hope and uh, going forward we want to start um, setting up benchmarks to the industry, take, uh, bring more structure to the industry, uh, take it to a direction uh, together with all stakeholders involved. So I, pretty much that's what my professional career has been. All right. So. Uh if I were to ask you in the entire professional career which you mentioned, just mentioned, so what are few learnings or what are top two learnings I would say uh, that have helped you actually to maintain the patience and the calm to achieve what you desire? So one is I think uh, perseverance. Um, we have to realize that uh, there will be challenges and there will be obstacles in no matter what you do whether it's a, uh, whether it's a startup or whether it's a job um, or in life for that matter you'll always have certain challenges. Uh, only the moment where you have ch those challenges, this crucial moment, uh, that's the only point that you have to sort of you know live up to and sort of just try and get over it. Those moments are a few and rare uh, in life which could decide, which could make or break. If you've overcome those moments, those moments of uh, feeling really low and feeling is this what I'm supposed to do, is this the right path, is this the right direction or that state of confusion whether you know should I, should I not. Uh, if that is taken care of, the rest is, is something that is manageable. Um, you know rest is, it's going to be a roller coaster, it's going to have its ups and downs but um, those crucial moments can decide which way we go ahead. So taking control of those crucial moments is one thing I learned that at that moment if I just persevere, if I just commit to no point of return, I will sail through. Uh, that is definitely one learning that I've got. And second learning that I've got is that um, you know uh, you're the only person who's indispensable. So uh, work hard uh, as much as you can. Mm -hmm. You know, push your limits and uh, rest everything come and go, rest everything will follow, uh, you know, your um, flyings will come and go. Only thing that you have to do is persevere yourself. That's it. All right. 
So perseverance and uh, you are indispensable. So that's the two learnings that we have from Ankita. So uh, Ankita, if I were to describe you, if I were to describe you, you are uh, the Maricom of social media industry for India, right? So oh uh, if if uh, yes, uh, so if if we were to you know dig a little deeper dig a little deeper so being a girl and actually starting up it's, it's really really difficult in in indian scenario yeah. so for all those people who aspire or all, the, all those all uh, those aspiring maricoms out there in respective industries so what would be your suggestion to them so uh, honestly every time i've got uh, this question uh, i've a lot of people have asked me this uh, i have been very fortunate I've had a family who's been extremely supportive. I have a very strong support system of friends. Uh, and I think I've also uh, made a lot of efforts to have that circle of friends. I've invested a lot in their lives. And that's why they, you know, sort of uh, reciprocate and support me. And uh, my family, especially my mother, they're very, very, um, you know, while they hold close to the Indian values, they're at the same time very modern and very, you know, broad minded. So that has always been a support. Um, They've always encouraged me to do whatever you know, sort of makes me feel nice about. So I have never seen this uh, sort of uh, restriction or bondage, you know, that unfortunately a lot of women in the country suffer from. Um, the only thing that can get them out of it is their willingness to do so. Nobody else can, you know, sort of help them. I've also had times that I have to had to fight. Of course, I was a teenage that. You know, past ten, I can't stay out of the house, and uh, so I've also gone through all of that. Um, but uh, I have grown, and my family has grown alongside me. Uh, in terms of uh, the external environment, so this is your immediate support system who can support or cannot support, or can possibly, you know, stand up and say, "Sorry, you cannot become an entrepreneur, or you cannot do these 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 things because you're a girl." So that in that case, I was lucky. Uh, externally, um, I have always been uh, benefited because I'm of the fairer sex. Uh, I have always been able to sort of get the right attention if I need, if I'm able to. Um, I don't know, it has its pros, you know, I've always felt that. Uh, um, I've got uh, sort of encouragement because of being a girl. Because so the society thinks that, uh, you know, women have restrictions some of them come out in extra support. So that sort of works in my favor. Mm -hmm. And um, sometimes it's just easier to get work done because you're a woman. So I think that also sort of helps. Um, and I think women mm -hmm. are generally multitaskers. So that works in our favor to being an entrepreneur. So I, I really don't see any downside uh, in the country that we are today, especially if you're in a metropolitan city. I don't really see a downside. I'm, I, I guess in smaller towns, it probably can be a challenge, uh, but like I said, only it's only your willingness that can get you out of it. All right. So uh, basically, it, it works in your favor definitely. And you know, India being uh, very young, and it, it is called a heaven for entrepreneurs at this point in time. Nice. So uh, let's move let's move a little ahead and uh, dig down to business terms. So. You being in an industry which is media industry and you know more of internet media, I would say, a lot of content has to be produced every day and fed to the people who are hungry out there. So how the journey or how would you describe this particular business of internet where you have to actually produce a lot of content and then earn equity and basically use that equity to further drive your money and every other thing? It is very difficult because uh, internet penetration is low. Um, people, internet digital advertising spends are low in comparison to conventional media. Um, we are nothing from you know digital advertising, so to say. Uh, in comparison to when I say nothing, it's very minuscule to bigger businesses, offline media houses. Um, conventional media patterns we earn very less digital space that is so the it is a challenge to for the first few years of months you just have to like you said build your equity so your entire investment just goes there in terms of times resources um, you don't really get 
to make a lot of money until you have uh, built that equity in the industry or among your readers or build a strong reader base regular royal loyal reader base that you've built so it is very difficult um, mm -hmm. but i i believe that it is like thing happen in the current world um, five years 10 years 15 years from now it's it's all going to be digital there are magazines that are shutting down um, newspapers that are getting very very active on the digital space their investments are increasing in the digital space um, technology spends have grown to support these changes so I think we're at very fortunately we're at the just the right time so if we invest now I'm hoping we you know reap benefits mm -hmm. in the long term like really long term where digital is you know by then we would have had 10 years 15 years of existence when somebody else is probably just mm -hmm. starting so that is right. uh, the hope oh, okay and that that is the hope and uh, that is where we live by that is the right. code we are following as of now so right uh, all right uh, ankita so uh, this was on the side of uh, you know the business model so if if i were to ask i'm aware of something like called social media examiner is the model inspired by a uh, social media examiner or it was the exact need of the industry where you could not actually find any content or any research work related to india or it's a combination of both what exactly is social samosa if we were to decode it you know uh, how it actually originated so it originated only and only for the reason because there was nothing india specific uh, which was getting everything together uh, under one roof aggregating all the good work that is happening if i want to research what if i'm going in pitching to a brand and if i want to just see what they have what covered of that brand have done in the past uh, i have no place to go to mm -hmm. i have no platform to look up to at the most i'll right. find certain if i research really hard i will find websites of agencies who have put it up as their case studies um but nothing that is very easily available mm -hmm. now somebody now a social media executive or a co-founder of an agency has to just come or a brand head has to just come to the case study section mm -hmm. look up what their competitors are doing uh, or come to campaign section and see what the competitors are doing what kind of campaigns they are doing also eventually we realized that um, a lot of people don't know how to use social media a lot of people are still struggling those who know are unfortunately victims of bad practices um or unhealthy practices not bad practices entirely but unhealthy practices um they also have no place to go and read and say that okay this is the way it needs to be done um internationally they can read a lot of blogs but that might not be easily applicable of india we still way behind in terms of the way uh, international uh, banks think and operate um the our dna is very different so that is the reason why social the most was started right. um of course we looked up a lot of international blogs not just social media examiner uh, to just understand a little more take their learnings but it was not because they exist and we want to have a replica of the indian version of that but because there was a need in the indian industry all right so it's it's just the demand and supply scenario right right exactly so uh so let's come to something more interesting now which which would actually excite users so uh guys ankita has a follower base of approximately 24000 people on twitter okay so this is like humongous humongous equity which is building and which she has built over a period of years right. so ankita if if you know for people out there for entrepreneurs out there youngsters out there watching this if if you were to tell them a way through to twitter because people are really really struggling what twitter is you know it it's not it really popular in india to that extent what what facebook is so if you were to give us a just into how how exactly ant entrepreneurs and uh, youngsters could use it or the gen y we call how can they use it to their benefit so the only uh, thing that they should not worry about is followers everything else they should worry about on twitter um they should start and invest a lot of time uh, in interacting following people and interacting with them and building actual relationships with them 
when I started using Twitter, I used to attend n number of tweet ups, meet ups that you has that used to happen around Twitter. In fact, I got a few first few clients through Twitter. I got my first co-founder through Twitter. I got my second co-founder through Twitter. I even got a relationship through Twitter. So that just shows that I was. Uh -huh. um, I was invested in the platform. It's and I didn't do it from a purpose of okay, one day I will have e you know these many followers and I'll have some equity. I just did because I liked building relationships and I liked having a network and I liked helping people and I liked getting help. Um, so all that I did and over a period of time, it's the same reasoning that probably um, is replicated to social samosa. You know, we just put out content, we just put out content, we just put out content, we just interacted with the industry, we told them give us more content, give us your case studies, give us your campaigns, write articles, and eventually, eventually people start reading and a following. So the same thing I think I did on Twitter. I uh, genuinely helped a lot of people, I genuinely asked for help, I genuinely interacted, I actually made offline friends out of that. Uh, there's so many people I know only through Twitter, and we don't even speak for months. But I know what their life is, what is happening in their life, what they're doing, and as and when they need something from me, I give them, or I need something from them, they give me. Uh, that's how the culture of Twitter is. Um, so I think if one just focuses on building friends out of Twitter, you know, work friends, personal friends, professional friends, I think rest will follow. This is the only thing they need to worry about. They don't need to worry about how many people are following them. They need to worry about how many people they are genuinely following. Not following as in click and follow, but genuinely following their lives. That is the only thing they need to worry about. And everything then will be reciprocated from the community. All right. So the key key is to building relationships on Twitter, on social media, basically. And that's what social stands for actual, in actual reasons, if we say. Right. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, okay. So, uh, Ankita, if if I would have to ask you, you know, uh, you you have been writing or analyzing a lot of brands uh, on social media, on digital trends, and everything. So, if I were to ask you, what is what are two things that all these agencies, not agencies, rather, I would say, all these brands on social media are doing wrong, are doing wrong. If I, I if I may ask, so they're looking at social media just like they look at conventional media uh, as a broadcasting platform. Uh, mm -hmm. They they're just thinking that just like a TV advertisement or a print advertisement or a radio ad, they can shove the message marketing message down the throat of the users. That is mm -hmm. that is the basis of everything that they're doing wrong. That's why they're doing irrelevant hashtag contests. That's why they're doing um, campaigns that you know just are working because of a decent gratification that they're giving to their users. That's why they only have um, they're only following how many number of impressions did I get instead of really focusing on how many relationships were built and how many customers uh, prospective customers were converted to customers or how many. Um, Angry customers were sort of bought back to us. Um, the everything starts from this that they are considering uh, social media without the social aspect of it. They are considering only considering it as only media. So if they get the social back in it, uh, I think they will everything will fall into place. You know their metrics will change, what they are measuring will change. What brands, what briefs brands are giving to agencies will change. What agencies are pitching to brands will change if they realize that this is not a broadcasting mm -hmm. medium. This is an engaging medium. All right. So, any any example that you would you would like to follow it with uh, somebody, so a brand which is doing it correctly in India, so people could actually look onto their Facebook page or Twitter page and actually learn from it. So, I personally. Uh, there are a bunch of brands, but um, two of them that I really enjoy, uh, you know, the way uh, they use uh, social media. One is Kingsha. Uh, they truly build loyalty, customer loyalty. Uh, of course, they're fortunate that the brand in itself is a very fun brand, you know, it's alcohol at the end of the day, but uh, they do activities that are not driven by marketing, but by building communities. Uh, building passion. So they KF beer up uh, that they do uh, when they open up registrations within few seconds, registrations are filled up. 
few seconds. Oh. It is unimaginable for me that a brand in India can get that kind of loyalty. Of course, they're giving free beer in KF Beer Rubs, but the idea is that they've built a property out of it. People really want to go to KF Beer Rub. Um, and not because they're getting free beer, uh, but because it's sort of over a period of time, it has become a prestige issue that I was able to go to KF Beer Rub. That is phenomenal. <laughs> Uh, yeah, that's where I think they are not using it on media, but they're using their, you know, sort of getting the social angle to it. And um, I also personally like uh, MTV a lot because they have uh, um, a personality that they follow on social media, and uh, that's the same personality that they have offline. And then they spend a lot of time understanding what their audience likes to consume, and then they bring up either shows or they bring up uh, you know the, the timing of the content that they share everything then revolves around what their consumers like um, so I think these two definitely I'm specifically very impressed with all right so it's it's again the human side that matters right absolutely okay so Ankita if, if we were to you know just close our eyes for a moment for a moment in, you know, and imagine that where the industry is headed and uh, what are the things that people need to be aware of or what are the opportunities for entrepreneurs out there right now at, at this particular point in time so well, in terms of digital how would you describe that in terms of digital I think that is one space the maximum opportunities are available right now maybe I'm saying this because I'm in the digital space and I don't know how what kind of growth other industries are having but as much as I understand, all industries, irrespective of you know whichever vertical they are from, uh, are going to go digital. So if, whether they are going to digital in terms of using social media digital for their marketing or trying in uh, digital digitalizing their uh, internal processes or the way they function. Uh, or trying to get um, interact with their any stakeholder, whether it's customers, employees, uh, they're going to use digital to interact with every stakeholder of theirs. So, which is because of which there is so much growth or so much opportunity in the digital space, because every other industry, every other business is going to go digital uh, in some form or the other. Whether it is, uh, it's like that era of where all businesses started using computers. So anybody in the computer technology business sort of saw a boom. Um, tell, tell me one business that doesn't use computers now, for example. So eventually there's going to be a time where every business is going to be digital. You know, it's going to be either be on digital or going to be digital in there in the way they function. Um, so any aspect of this can be picked up by an entrepreneur and use that as an opportunity to business. Whether it could be like an agency trying to get them on board, whether it could be a tool trying to uh, tell them what their audience are talking about, whether it's a, it's an HR company trying to build uh, uh, you know employee interactions, social interactions within the company, uh, or whether it is a um, um, logistics company that is trying to digitalize uh, material management or uh, delivery management between uh, you know, 100, 200 year old organized that, into, that are into supply, uh, supplies of goods or whatever. So anywhere digital can sort of be applied. So there's extremely huge scope opportunities in my personal opinion. All right. So the the you know what the glass is empty now. It's it's up to you to decide uh, how much you want to fill it and with with what you want to fill it. Yeah, so true. it's it's like a glass of digital, right? Okay, so uh, Ankita, if uh, not if uh, uh, so, for the viewers of Kikotech, you know, uh, they are probably young, okay? They they and they are aspiring and they want to do something. So if you know youngsters, youngsters like us face a lot of problems. So if if the last wordings to those youngsters, you want to give something as a lesson to them. So, which they could actually focus upon and uh, you know learn from it. Any anything from your real you know life and a, a kind of example, what would have happened and what you have learned in your life from that particular thing. So, and what they can learn that would be really really great. 
so i don't play it in life but um, always try and observe and have mentors um so many things we don't know you know but we are young and we think no we'll be able to do um just because i can just tap into you know google and <laughs> do it myself but um, i would it would have helped me a lot if 5 years back i would have taken advice of the right kind of people and then built whatever i was doing i would have started uh, i would have already have a advantage of being a year ahead for example um so i think uh, now i've realized this now i you know often speak to my network it doesn't need to be the mentor can doesn't need to be 10 years elder to you necessarily it can be just somebody who is um, who has domain expertise say a lawyer or a financial uh, you know like a ca uh, you know a ca friend you know it doesn't necessarily need to be uh, an expert financial financialist who or financial advertise uh, financial advisor it can just be the guy in your building whom you grew up with and he went and became a ce you know so um so basically take a lot of external help um, early in your career take a lot of external support um then small small things we don't realize we don't see but that help uh, pace up our business uh, can help a lot mm-hmm. uh, so the the mentors are an essence of you know to grow forward to grow a little faster rather i would say faster yes faster right. we will grow because if you have a desire you will go grow any which ways you know you will there's nothing that can stop you if you have the passion and the willingness and to persevere and work hard but not all hard work gets the right kind of you know sometimes you're doing hard work in the wrong way and end up realizing that this all all the time was a waste uh, so instead work towards in the basically correct always make sure your trajectory towards growth uh, towards success uh, is correct is not you're not taking detours you know because detours only cause waste of time um, something like i said as small as getting your financial uh, documents in place you know right from day one or you know making sure you maintain a cash flow uh, cash flow statement and like i'm i'm not a financials person i do not understand these things um i was mm-hmm. assigned a mentor uh, via uh, cherry blair foundation for a year and she had a social samosa she sort of gave me these things and till date i use what she's taught me and i use it very very successfully i use it it helps my business so much and uh, if i was closed back then i wouldn't have got those tools that i use now and she's given me multiple tools not just financial tools you know team management tools and i could go to somebody who leads a team of 20 people in an organization and ask what is it that you do how do you measure success of each employee how do you make sure you know your employees don't fight amongst each other i mean not that that happens in social versa but uh, small things you know you could you could learn especially if your team you know like ours is a small and lean team but uh, if you are building an organization that requires 100 people eventually in 2 years how do you make sure you build processes right from your first employee so that 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 scales up that way exactly to the 100th employee also so these things uh, are out there in the market businesses are using it already people are using it already but we are not aware of them as i speak i don't know hundreds of things more but when in doubt mm-hmm. ask then in right. when not in doubt still ask <laughs> right so any any tools you would like to mention right here so by tools you mean techniques or or what uh tools mean like a uh, team management tool you just mentioned or any other particular tool which no, you would I, like I, to mention uh, to the i think team management tool would depend on what is the requirement i mean we use uh in social samosa we use base camp we use um, for task management we use google spreadsheets very actively we use uh, clinch pad for um, our lead management uh, crm um we use uh, rapative as a plugin um, on google chrome that right. allows uh, me to see the social profiles of people whom i'm interacting with these are few things exactly. that uh, i have discovered over the internet and we use but um, 
So I think more than these tools, it's about the way we use them and why are we using them. That techniques need to be in place. And for that, you need to take help. All right. So uh, Ankita, one last question, which is really, really important for all of us is, you know, whenever we talk about approaching people or approaching mentors, or maybe someone who's, who we are looking forward to pitch an idea maybe, or take feedback, or take mentorship, or it could be anything. So how, what is the exact way to approach them? Because even I have tried to approach a lot of people whom I want to interview, but uh, they decline the request, they simply decline the request. So, so what is the exact way, or is there any way forward? I mean. No, there is no way forward. If they don't want to give the job, they won't give. So. Uh, like uh, when we started Social Samosa, we used to get a lot of rejections because we were obviously very small uh, back then. Nobody wanted to spend time. Uh, just last week, somebody, some platform reached out for an interview with me. And uh, the first thought that I, when I looked up their platform, it seemed like they've just started. And uh, you know, the inter other interviews that were there were of uh, very younger uh, people in that specific industry that that portal is about. So for a second, I got a thought that, do I really want to spend time answering these questions? You know, I, I have so many things on my plate and I don't need to, I don't want to, maybe I should just ask them what is the kind of traffic that they're getting? You know, if they're getting very little traffic, is it worth, you know, I'll tell them, sorry, I'd like to pass this at this point of time. And then I realized that that is a stint of arrogance that I have, that there was a time when even we wanted interviews and we were also small and there were a lot of people who gave it to us. So, and that thought made me go ahead and tell that, yes, please send in the questions, you know, I'll answer them. Um, but they could have done nothing if I would have said no. So, um, uh, right. they should just move on to the next person then. Okay, if, so... It's great I, if people <laughs> help, but you will not always find so that's one thing that about being an entrepreneur, that you have to take rejection very well. Right. So uh, that is the way forward. Yeah, All just right. Move on to the next so, one, the next idea, the next thing. Just come, keep moving on. All right. So just keep moving on is the uh, key mantra. So right. guys, uh, please, please, please keep moving on, and whosoever rejects you, make sure you don't really get depressed by the rejection and. It, Take it as a motivation. So that is what we actually derive out of Ankita's statement. And so, uh, Ankita, any last thoughts? You have? Yeah, I was just saying, if they need uh, help, whoever is listening to the video, if they, if I can help, if it's in my capacity, then you know I will if they just tweet to me or mail me. All right. So guys, uh, do do mail uh, your queries or if you have anything, she's available for help. So thank you so much, Ankita, for sparing some some of your precious time for Geekotech. And uh, we are really, really, I, you know, I, I, we find your insights really helpful. I hope so. so uh, we wish you all, you know, good. <laughs> right. So we wish, we wish you good luck for your the for your next couple of years and the entire journey you have at Social Samosa. And may may God bless you. Thanks a lot, Ankita. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me.